huge numbers of LA public school students fail to show up for online classes. How long before the teachers unions demand raises for all teachers for having fewer students? I'm Dr. Duke, she's Katie, and this is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello everyone, and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show, the only program that keeps you educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. Today, we're talking about teachers unions trying to bully online charter schools to shut down because brick and mortar schools did. Plus, amid the coronavirus, public schools are now providing breakfast, lunch, dinner, and free toilet paper butt wipes because as one parent just said, they just don't have time to make a sandwich for their child, even though they're not working. Then we're delivering some real education with today's instant classic, Landscape with the Fall of Icarus. It's a great little poem, but we start in the good old California area where more than 15,000 public schools in LA County School District alone have decided not to attend online classes. And the thing that gets me about this story, Katie, is, look, I get this. Are you you surprised that public school kids aren't logging on (gasps) for their daily global warming lesson? Here's my shocked face. I'm not shocked either. But what does surprise me is guess what the reason they're not coming on is? Why, why? Because they're underserved kids. Mm. So every, this is an article here from the, the, it's not surprising, it's the LA Times. You would think that prejudice is the reason. That we can't get these kids interested in education, that's racism. We can't get these kids to take responsibility for their own education, because it's racism. From the story, about 15,000 LA LA high school students are absent online and have failed to do any schoolwork while more than 40,000 have not been in daily contact with their teachers since March 16th when the coronavirus forced campus shutdowns. Those figures, the first official data on student online participation, reveal, here's the sob story, the massive challenge confronting the nation's second largest school district, which is attempting overnight to transition to distance learning and the vast majority of it's for low-income families. Many lacking computers and internet access. Yeah. First of all, this entire article from the LA Times, you can read more of it, Katie. It reads like uh, our kids are suffering because they don't, all you got to do is get out and go to school. When are we going to hold American students responsible for the fact that they don't want an education? If you don't want an education, it's not systemic racism's problem. It's not white privilege's problem. It's not white supremacy's problem. If your kids can't, if you as parents can't motivate your kids and the schools can't motivate the kids to actually want an education, it's a free country. Don't get one then. And they're not. Apparently. And they're not. Well, UC Berkeley education and African American studies professor Stop. Janelle. Repeat those credentials Scott, again. Scott, UC Berkeley, number uh, one. Number one, UC Berkeley. Education. Oh boy, an education major. African American studies professor. And there you have it. Janelle Scott got involved with this LA Times article and said this crisis has laid bare what we always knew how equitable opportunities are so dependent on parental background and wealth and access to resources. Having a physical school does really matter, and having caring adults around who can support children and families And there you go with the anti-homeschool stuff, right? Notice what your public school kids who you've had since they were five years old, these public school kids in LA County, they've been going to school with you public school teachers, the coronavirus hits, and you spend your time taking a swipe at homeschooling. This is why we have to have public schools, brick and mortar schools, because we can't get your kids interested in education unless you send them to our lockdown facilities eight hours a day where they have no choice but to sit there and listen to us drone on. And let this be a lesson to you, mom and dad. The lesson is not that these kids have minds of their own that they're wasting, not that the parents have failed, not that the public schools didn't instill in these kids anything like a love of education. Given what they've got in the L.A. public schools, we did a uh, story last year. A- almost 80 percent of African-American males in L.A. school district could not read at all. We're all functionally illiterate. And you wonder why these kids, when they don't have to go to these indoctrination centers, don't get online. You think it has to do with racism? Oh, for the love of God. And to, to take a swipe. At homeschooling. This is why, notice what we we don't need educated parents around these kids. We don't need motivated educators around them. We just need concerned, caring adults in the public schools. So in other words, it's basically an admission from, what's her name? 
Janelle, Janelle Scott, Scott, UC Berkeley, education, African American studies professor. Strike three right there. Berkeley, education, education pr professor, African American studies. Strike three right there, you're out. All she can do is blame it on white privilege and and, and make her anti homeschool swipes. Care. They're just glorified nurseries. We don't have educators. We have concerned parents who are looking after them in brick and mortar schools. And we know that all these schools, because th we've been pouring millions and millions into these schools, especially in LA, uh, their school system, because they, they are what this? Are they the second or the largest? Second, second largest school district in the, the whole nation. All these kids were probably given computers to take home. Yep. They, Chromebook. Chromebooks. All uh, maybe not every single one of them, but the vast majority no, of have them. It's even worse than that. If you go online and read this LA this LA Times article, they were all given this cube thing, right? This oh, yeah. this device they were handed that would allow them to, easy act uh, right? to get the internet. Yeah, yep. to get the broadband. Yeah, yep. yeah. Get spare me your nonsense about this shows how the equitable divide. First of all, I'll bet you there are a lot of rich LA kids who aren't showing up either. Mm -hmm. How do you know they're all minor? How do you know they're all un underserved children? Isn't that a racist assumption? A little bit. Isn't it? That if kids aren't coming to school, they got to be those damn minorities? Well, they do admit that the harder part is not the technology. The harder part is establishing a connection to the student. And I don't mean a digital connection. I mean that human connection of some sort. Yeah. Yeah, so the purpose of public schools is to provide caring f adult figures and apparently breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Exactly, mm -hmm. we'll learn about that we'll one later. But before we get there, we're gonna actually go just a little bit north up to Oregon where the teachers unions there are trying to pressure, uh, well pressure Oregon itself to shut down the virtual charter school because if our brick and mortar kids can't be there and getting an education, why should you online virtual schools actually be working too? So we have teachers unions, um, Oregon Connections Academy is a K-12 online public school, and it's supported by digital learning giant Pearson. Okay, so on their enrollment page, they had to put on there saying that due to Governor Kate Brown's Executive Order 2008, as of March 27th, no Oregon public school students may withdraw or enroll into any schools during the school closure. So even if you know, you are a parent who wants your child to learn. You took them out of the brick and mortar because they're closed and you want to get them in front of a, you know, an actual teacher and get an education. Sorry, you're not even allowed to do that because maybe they'll do better than those brick and mortars. Yeah, the thing that's so shocking about almost a lot of the stories we're going to do this week, right, including the stories we're doing today, is what you see here is what a complete and utter um, business racket public schools have become. This is about protecting their territory. It's about protecting their turf, right? When our kids who don't show up, don't turn up and go to class, that's not our fault. We had nothing to do with this, right? This is mom's fault. And it's the fact that these kids need brick and mortar schools. When you have an opportunity in Oregon for these kids to leave the schools and find alternative learning uh, circumstances, including online and did, nope, you will not be allowed to do that because your kids belong to our public school factories. And let's face it, how do we, we need to change this. How do we measure teachers, schools, school districts by how many kids they simply pass, right? And so what have they been doing for about 15 years now? Passing. Simply social promoting everybody because that's how you get paid. Now the kids are out of school and you don't have that metric, right? So the fact that these kids might wander off to places where they would get real educations, including homeschooling and online schooling, we have to protect our brand and how we make our money. It is the every aspect of this is a scam. I mean, the 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 fact that they're turning our kids out uneducated, that they're 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 usurping the role of mom and dad. Here's another example the, the, uh, that you see it here that the, the, you you will not sign up for virtual charter schools. Yeah. The idea here is that these schools, ha they have and they want a complete monopoly on this. It's not enough that they have monopolized 85% of our public school kids. They want to shut down the other schools, particularly the ones that work, from being any kind of meaningful competition. And the Wall Street Journal editorial board actually wrote about this, and they said under pressure from the unions, the Oregon Department of Education stopped allowing transfers on March 27th. So at Oregon Connections Academy, that meant that some 1,600 students who had sought to transfer aren't allowed to. Nope. And if you take a look at the Oregon Teachers Union, they put out three priorities. 
during the crisis. Three, number one, protecting students and teachers from exposure to the virus. Right. Okay. Fair enough. Number two, maintaining the delivery of meals, meals to children who were provided with them when school was open. Okay. And so, wait, so, so before we move on from that one, so now the kids and parents are both stuck home together. Mm-hmm. We're going to force those kids and their parents out of the household mm-hmm. to drive to the school mm-hmm. to receive food from people who themselves potentially might be contaminated. That's correct. Okay, all right, just all so right. we know that. Because and then, that has nothing to do with education at all. No, and then number three, ensuring teachers are kept, quote, financially mm-hmm. whole. So out of those three key priorities, the word education, teaching, education of our students, no, I didn't see it in the, anywhere in there. No, no. This, has, uh, this is the part of the scam, right? This is an industry. The, the American public school system is compulsive, mandatory, highly expensive daycare for your kids. They give them their snacks and their crackers. They give them their naps. They teach them how to wipe their nose and how to, be tr- how to deny their gender. They leave them largely illiterate. And when this kind of thing happens, right, we will be the parents, not you. <sighs> Don't worry, because L.A. and then all the whole state of Pennsylvania, they're also providing similar warnings about allowing these transfers. So if Oregon has already done it, other states are going to be looking to do well, it, Well, and Mark Siegel, a spokesman for the Oregon Department of Education, confirms that although Brown's order did not explicitly call for the closure of online charters, state education officials believe that is the intent of the governor's order. So, okay, there you go. We're, the, we're from the Department of Education. We're, we get to interpret what the governor says in a long absolutely selfish ways that promotes our own public school scams yes and since you had well i guess we both brought up the fact that uh, three square meals a day are being served for our children during this time and who knows if it's just the children eating those meals we do have examples from all across the nation katie let the video speak for itself okay Cars lined up outside of Kelly Lane Middle School, one of many meal distribution sites for families. Shelby Kelly says the district handed out more than 15,000 meals last week, oh yeah, starting test. Monday, along with bags of breakfast and lunch. Families can drive up and grab dinners. I know a lot of parents, you know, working are working from home and may not have time to fix a lunch and stuff for the kids, and it's 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 been wonderful. W T F. Did you see that last woman? African American woman with her kid in the back seat. She literally, did you, first of all, did you see the line of cars that the Volkswagen was followed by a Lexus? The, the people who are driving these cars are driving forty and fifty thousand dollar cars. And then that one, one particular woman said, Moms and dads are now home with the kids. So mom and dad and the children are within five feet of their own refrigerators. But they don't have time to fix their kids' lunch. Let me repeat that. Mom and dad now, this is the the logic of the mother who got her kid into the car, drove him all the way to the school to get bagged lunches. A lot of moms and dads are stuck at home with the kids. And they may be too busy to feed them lunch, even though the cupboard and the refrigerator reach out and touch them. They're right there for you. What does this tell you about the mindset of the American public school mom and dad? Well, the fact that they're doing all three meals now is obviously absolutely over the top ridiculous. I personal example, my home district, I saw they're doing it from ages zero to 18, meaning if I wanted to and there's no proof of ID to show that my my five month old is a student in their school. So, so you can go there and get yep. your three square meals a day. So you drive up in your Lexus, you got your cell phone on while you're waiting in line. The kids are piled in the back seat with their Nintendo switches, right? They're all wearing designer clothes from Nike and Under Armour and you name it, because you gotta get your ham sandwich, ham sandwich and your orange Ugh. from the public schools. Because, you know, you're all sitting at home on your Game Boys, no one your Nintendo Boys Switches, anymore. with your Lexuses in the parking lot, watching you your parking lot? 150 ch- cable channel TV, and <laughs> no one can get off their asses and go make a sandwich. So you gotta you get, go make me a sandwich. Do you understand, Mom and Dad, what I'm telling you here? This is nothing more than 
exploiting the system. You are you are not feeding starving children. You have decided that damn right the school I pay my real estate taxes. Damn right the school is going to pay me. Who's going to feed my kids? I'll drive them up there. I'll sit in lines burning gasoline and destroying the environment, right? While they're on their Game Boys. Nintendo Switches. I can't hear you over the crunch of my Cheetos that I just picked ah, up from the free lunch. What the, the, this is why you have an American populace that when government makes wildly outrageous, unconstitutional bans on you going out, going swimming, going whatever it is, well, oh, that's fine, we'll stay in. Well, we'll stay in until it's time to go pick up our sandwich, sandwich. from the local public school. And it better be on gluten-free bread. But in New York City... Students are able to go to 439 different sites to pick up this food. And you can get all three of your free meals there. No need to show identification, proof of eligibility, nothing. Uh, and May, it was March 23rd when Mayor Bill de Blasio announced that some parents and guardians can pick up the meals for their children. So it used to be that the children had to go, but now the parents... And how do they know? Who, if there are no yeah. IDs required... There it is. Right? I mean, if I'm a homeless no guy living in New York, there it is. I'm hitting 469 different stops every day. My child... 439. Yes, my, uh, my, my dozens of children need all this food. Just, just lo load up the shopping cart. I'll bring it back tomorrow. Well, and on top of this, if we're going to go aside from that, the other issue to look at, not only are the workers... Because they had yeah, at least right. one food service worker who did test positive for coronavirus. Not only are the workers in danger or possibly endangering others, all the food that has been wasted so far, because even with those who are going to basically use the entire system, there are the others who are like, eh, I don't want to do it. So they're wasting how many hundreds of thousands of pounds of food every day? And you go back to what you said before. How little does any of this have to do with education? Oh, you got states does. like Oregon that are actually prohibiting children from enrolling in alternative education opportunities because they're not public schools. You've got now kids risking the virus, parents risking the virus to go get their free government food. What this is, my friends, is a great coronavirus is a huge leap forward for the progressive idea that your kids belong to the state. And you, you drive, you get in your Lexus and you drive up to the local public school with your kids and their Nintendo switches on in the back seat. When you do that to get your free breakfast, Lunch and dinner, what you're telling them is that you, with all your wealth, you can afford a Lexus. You, with all your free time, right? We're all sitting at home quarantined with our kids. We still need government to feed us. Do you understand what you, you, you do? Clearly, you must. Either you're greedy and annoying and unworthy of being an American, or you're just plain stupid. And now it's time for some real education. So here you go. We're going to pipe this right in. We're going to beam it right into your living rooms so you can get educated in spite of the damn public schools. All right. Today, we're going to take a look at some fine art, the landscape with the fall of Icarus. It's an oil on canvas painting from 1560. It can be viewed at the Royal Museums of Fine Arts in Belgium, Brussels. Attribution has been given to Peter Bruegel the Elder, but in the 1990s, some people think that the one that was hanging up may not be his original and that that original actually has been lost. Anywho, the painting is derived largely from Ovid and is described in W.H. Auden's poem, Musée des Beaux-Arts. We'll talk about that tomorrow. Okay, let's take a look at the picture. There it is. It's a beautiful painting. No notice how you get the, the beautiful greens. Notice how the artist has captured the reflection of the sun off the ocean waves at different places and different points as that light refracts off the water. It's quite beautiful. A as Katie pointed out, this poem, this, this painting, was based on a, a, a Greek myth, in this case, written down by a Roman, Ovid, the first century B BC Roman poet. He wrote a book called The Metamorphosis, and in The Metamorphosis, he tells the story poetically of Icarus. Icarus was the, the son of Daedalus, and Daedalus was the great creator of the ancient world. He created the, ma the maze under Crete that the uh, Minotaur used to roam around in. Whenever there was something that needed to be uh, invented uh, for the benefit of mankind, Daedalus was the man. He was kind of like the Thomas Edison on steroids of the ancient Greek world. And Daedalus had a son named Icarus. Well, one day, Daedalus wanted to get away from the Greek tyrant the, on the, iris, the island of Crete, the one who forced him to build this maze for this monster. So what Daedalus did is he fashioned artificial wings, bird wings, and he used wax 
to fasten the wings together and to fasten the wings to himself. He did the same thing for his son. So he made these wings of wax, wax and feathers. And all of a sudden, one day on a bright day, bright, bright sunny day, he and his son Icarus, they took off and started flying. They were flying away from Crete and flying toward freedom and a new life. But Icarus, being impulsive, he just loved the flying, right? And he kept flying higher. He wanted to see how high he could go. And his father called to him, Icarus, Icarus, don't fly too close to the sun. But the boy wouldn't listen. A, a, a parable about rank ambition, right? Icarus flew too close to the sun. The wax melted. And boom, there's your picture. Right between the fisherman at the bottom and the boat, do you see a pair of legs sticking out from the water? That's Daedalus' son, Icarus. Icarus has just splashed into the sea dead. And the irony that the painter, Peter Bruegel, uh, Peter Bruegel the Elder, was trying to convince to us, show us, is look at the scene. You've got in the foreground, you've got a plowman with his horse plowing. You've got in the bottom right-hand corner a fisherman who's not even paying attention, too busy casting his line. Right behind the plowman, you have a shepherd. And then you have a ship, a sailing ship. Look at how the, the sail of that ship is completely billowed out. It's a windy day, right? And so with the wind and the sun and the noise of the sheep and the plow and the, the, the noise of the boat as it sails across the windy Mediterranean, no one has heard the splash. Icarus has crashed into the water and the world goes on. Look, every day somebody suffers and dies. And in almost every instance, it happens with almost nobody knowing. The world outside the hospital window of the person who's in their last stage of cancer, outside the window, the planes keep flying and the cars keep driving and the birds keep singing. That picture is a reminder, if we go back to it one last time, that the world is a place that is largely indifferent to even large scale, scale suffering, our ability to empathize. When there's a plane crash or something like that, it's news for a day and then it's forgotten. And so we do find ourselves in a situation of a, a first century BC poem by Ovid, the Roman poet, has been captured by a 16th century Dutch painter. And the, the, the lesson is staggering that if you didn't see those legs kicking out of the sea, and they're almost impossible to see, right? With everything else going on, it, it, you'd have to really study that poem to notice those legs and to ask yourself where they came from. It's a commentary on suffering in a world that is oftentimes not very empathetic. And that's going to do it for this Monday. If you like the show, please help us keep others educated by liking and sharing this episode with your family and friends on all of the platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Parlor. And if you're a fan of the audio podcast, please consider giving us a five-star review and leaving us a nice comment to keep us moving up in the rankings. And unless you live in Oregon and it's been banned, you can consider the fact that here at Freedom Project, our kids haven't missed a day of school. We are an online school with live teachers. We come right into your living room. So all you have to do is sit back back and watch your kids as they learn, learn, learn. We do all the grading. We do all the assignments. So if you have a student in K-12, anywhere from kindergarten through high school, and you want an education for them that is not overwhelmed by bullying, that is not uh, rife with radical sexuality, that does not allow for school shooters to enter in the back door and start blowing people away, request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedomforschool.com. For Freedom Project, I'm Dr. Duke. She's Katie. Until next time, stay educated, my friends.